so we're just going to get cracking with questions. Please raise your hand and then ask your questions. Uh, Salman Murad and Assistant Coach Mzwandi Listik. Still? Salman, maybe just start with you. Just what, Can you um, tell us what this obviously means for you, for your family? For, you come from a rich history of, of, of rugby tradition and stuff. And, and just to be kept in the Springboks, particularly given the fact that so many people, so parts of your family couldn't play for the Springboks. Yeah. Um, yeah, where do I start? Um, yeah, so I come from, obviously, it's well documented that uh, my father played rugby uh, back in back in the Saru days and my uncles as well. So they've, uh, essentially, they've been there before paving the way for us as professional athletes. Uh, so it's a, it's a massive privilege for myself and my family and, uh, and a huge honor as well to, to captain the Springboks. Um, to be honest with you, you never really think that, that, that it's possible and that it's actually going to happen. Uh, so it was a massive, massive shock and surprise to me as well, but um, something that I take immense pride in. Um, my family will be up here as well, so they will they will enjoy the occasion as well, uh, along with me. Um, so it's something we're really looking forward to. And um, if I may say, it's not like when you captain the Springboks, I believe that it's not only just about yourself. It's about, like I said before, about, about the people that's been there before you, um, about the next generation coming through. Um, it's about creating hope, essentially. Someone, when were you told and how difficult was it to keep the Um So I found it on Monday morning for the first time. Coach, uh, Coach Stoker announced the team to us. And initially I thought it was a typo next to my name. Because <laughs> it was a, it was quite small to see, but um, then he announced it out loud. And I immediately like just thought to myself, Wow, what, what, what a massive honor and privilege. Um, you know, what helped a lot is, is the fact that I have captained the Stormers before and Western Province. So it, it, it's not really something new. But, um, you know, what helps as well is, is there's some experienced players in the, in the lineup this weekend. And they've really made it so much easier this week. Um, they've really taken responsibility in their roles. Um, and essentially for me, it's just to... You know, to to um, to make sure that everything is running smoothly and um, <coughs> to focus on my game. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Simon. You you've spoken about what it means for your family <coughs> and that, but for you personally, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned captaining SS schools and and all of that thing, but you've been through some dark times individually as well with injuries, kind of um, impeding your progress. So, so how does it feel that? You know, you finally fit, you've been a few games together and now you're captaining the Springboks. Yeah, it's like you mentioned, it's been a very tough road up, up until here. Um, but I firmly believe, uh, you know, these things happen for a reason and it makes you stronger at the end of the day. As much as it sounds like a cliche, it, it really does. Uh, it gives you time to to, to reflect, um, gives you time to have introspection uh, with yourself um, and it really shows you um, just how, how important your, your support base is and your family. Um, and therefore, for me, it's, it's, it's so much more special to, to get this honor because I know how much it means to them. They've been there through the dark times. Um, you know, I, I must have done quite a bit of rugby and opportunities, but um, I firmly believe it, it, it all happens for a reason. Thank you. Can you please just um, Okay, can you possibly explain to me? Um, Rasi had a nice story about you, and he said that, that, that almost like twenty your character about you being injured as a storm player, captain going over road to Ireland. What was the story about, and why did you take that decision, and why did that make such a big impression on Rasi Rasmus with you? Um, to be honest, uh, I, for me, it was just about being there for the team uh, at that stage. Um, so they embarked on the, the, um, the, the first couple of games of the URC and they went on a tour to, to, to Europe, a four-week tour. And um, the first game was against Benetton. Uh, we didn't really get off to a good start. And I just reached out to the coach and, and, I, and I really just genuinely offered my help. Um, obviously being named as the, the season captain, I just thought that I felt very helpless sitting back home. So um, I was really grateful to be able to give them the opportunity to, to go over and, and join them. Um, 
yeah, whether it made a difference or not, I, I don't know. But uh, for me, it, it felt like I was contributing in a certain way to just be there with the team and, and to have some sort of presence. Uh -huh. How would you describe your leadership style and does it also help having a strong leadership group within the team with all these experienced players and also a strong coaching staff? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, uh, these days leadership has changed so much. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's changed over time. I think previously you'd have a designated captain and you'd make all the decisions on the field. But um, I think within the, the, the Springbok setup, um, what helps a lot is these experienced players all, all around. Um, these players that take ownership in their, in their roles and their departments of the game. At the end of the day, the captain really, what he does is he's, he's there, he's, he's the face, face. But maybe, maybe it's just the face, but uh, he's a mediator, I'd say, and he makes sure that everything runs smoothly. And um, like I said, you know, earlier in this week, those guys really took responsibility and made my job so much more easier. And I could just slot in and I focus on my game. You had you, Captain. Who did you find first? Uh, I found my wife first, to be honest. Um, I didn't want to tell my mom and dad because I know they can't keep their wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I left that for them to find out on the Tuesday afternoon. And um, obviously, when they found out, uh, it, was, it was really emotional for them. And it, most of the time, I was trying to just hush them and tell them not to cry. Don't cry. It's a, it's a massive privilege. But really, it just showed me how much it meant to them. And um, yeah, it's really special to have my wife here as well along the road with it. Um, Simon, uh, you obviously missed out in the World Cup and had to watch from the sidelines. My question would be looking ahead at the game this weekend. Did you see Portugal's game against Fiji then? And how would you describe the game plan? What type of game do they play? What can you expect? Yeah, I think, you know, Portugal was probably one of the standout teams uh, in the World Cup. You know, not a lot of people um, expected much from them. And I think they really performed exceptionally well. Uh, if we can remember that they actually beat Fiji, which is a quality quality um, team uh, with quality individuals. Um, they obviously, their style, of, their style of rugby is different to everyone else. They, they like to promote the ball, they like to, to, to spread it wide. Uh, they've got very elusive loose forwards. Um, they've got great backs and an outstanding captain. Um, so we really need to be, we really need to be um, ready and pitch on the day. And I think it's going to be of utmost importance that we you know, stick to our plan and um, really try and force our game on them. I think my personal motto would be to look everyone that's playing this weekend. We all want to cement ourselves in the squad and um, we're all wanting to be part of the, the Springbok squad for the rest of the year. So I think for each and every one, I think as an individual goal is probably to, to play to the best of their own abilities. But for us as a team, our goal is to, at the end of the day, we were chosen to represent South Africa and we've got a massive responsibility in doing that. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of players out there that could have been here, but we are entrusted with that by the coaches. So that's a, that's a massive responsibility. And like I said earlier, it's to, it's to really focus on our game. The way we the way we want to play and what we want to get out of this game, um, I think that's going to be the most important thing. Someone you talked about um, coming back in the dark at times with injuries, but <coughs> just from a personal point of view, not just as a captain, uh, being involved in the Irish series and actually playing there, involved, uh, except from your debut as a Springbok, that was probably the biggest test you were yeah. involved in. How much did that um, mean for you personally, and what do you take into tomorrow's test? Yeah, I think that was probably arguably um, one of the bigger test matches that I played. Um, I've only, I think it's about seven test matches now that I've played. Um, and to be part of that, it really meant a lot to me. Um, I felt that, you know, the, the coaches do trust me on a personal level. Um, so it's always nice to be included in any match at 23. Um, 
uh, to get a taste of, you know, world number one versus world number two is really, really invaluable. And the learnings we took from that series is really something that we'll take uh, take with us for the rest of our for the rest of our campaign and season to come. Coach, um, what's lots of changes this weekend? Um, obviously, the Iron Series is one of the cases of putting out your best team and stuff like that. Is it safe to say that this is now really the start of sort of maybe the next generation? We saw a few players against Wales, but now a lot more chances. Um, and how do you sort of balance that now, rugby championship, giving the exposure whilst trying to keep um, the results going the right way? Yeah, I think from the from the coaching staff, it was always part of the plan that when we, uh, after playing against Ireland, and then if we get an opportunity, for example, playing against Portugal, where we can also uh, give some guys also opportunities, you know. You know, it's a big thing for us to build squad depth. And, uh, and to be honest, yes, we've got a we've got a big goal, which is uh, 2027 as a project, you know, where we want to build and make sure that we're at our best when it comes to that. But once on the other side, again, okay, remember the world rankings will be key. You know? So every game counts, you know. So you want to make sure for the next two seasons, at least if we can maintain the status of being number one, it will give us a better <coughs> probably possible draw for the next World Cup, you know. Know, probably not to show maybe later in 2025 you know where they're going to do the world cup draw for for uh for the next world cup so i think for every game uh for us it's going to be massive it's going to count and uh, and the team that we've selected once again i think it's a team that is strong enough to 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 to, to perform and, and produce the results for us and a lot of those guys it's a well deserved uh, uh, chance for them i know i've seen some of them they've worked very hard to be where they are and uh once again, on the other side, congratulations uh, to Moon. You know, I've, I remember his first game with our team as Springbok. <laughs> he used to run at the back with the props. That's how much it was tough for him <laughs> when he first uh, joined our squad. I think it, I'm not sure it was 2021 or 2020 in Stellenbosch. Mm -hmm. So I've seen him as a youngster. I've coached him at the under-20s in 2017 as a 19-year-old. And uh, one thing I can be honest about is that it's been coming, you know. He's always been one of these special leaders, good human being. Uh, even from school, he was a captain, captain SA schools, SA in the twenties. So I think for him, it was a matter of when the opportunity comes for him. Uh, probably, I know one thing for sure: he was ready for that opportunity. So, yes, we've got a strong team, and uh, hopefully, also we can also produce for the people of Plumfontein. You know, I think that's one place where I feel like you know we, we owe them big time because the last time we played against Wales. We lost in the last couple of minutes in the game, so hopefully we can give them a good show tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Sanjide, apart from giving guys opportunity, looking ahead to the rugby championship, is there anything you're going to be able to take from tomorrow's game going into the rugby championship? Yes, for sure, Ken. Listen, <laughs> I think uh, the field is still open for, for every player who's in our squad. We have to select the squad of 30 next week. Uh, for the rugby championship and once again if some of these boys they perform tomorrow chances uh they might be also be part of that squad uh, comes next week and uh yeah so it's a very very important game for us you know and like i said again the future of our 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 team you know if you talk about project 2027 i think most of the players that will be playing tomorrow it's gonna they will determine how successful it will be that that project for 2027 so I am excited to see some of those youngsters, more especially if you look at a guy like uh, uh, Mornay van der Berg, you know, coming from the Lions, a team normally where they don't even go to the playoffs, but you know that boy will pitch up week in, week out, and he's a very tough boy. And normally to what Faf normally offers to us, I think I see a copy and paste on him. Uh, so I'm excited to see some of the youngsters. Um, uh, question for both of you. Um, something happened in the last game against Ireland, the first couple of minutes. That never happened before. Both our locks came bloody from from the field. It seems like deliberate, and then they counter the rocks from the five line out uh, uh, brilliantly within seconds. How did you um, first up? Did you figure out what happened with, in the first a couple of minutes? And second up, um, how to be better in a, in in a, in, a, in a rocks from five ten, ten minutes out to, to score tries. And probably that's where you lost the game. Um, I, I just want to uh, hear that from both of you. I think I'll catch that one. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing mm -hmm. is, is, those who were in the media conference last week on Friday, and you remember what I said about uh, the Irish side, you know, they're one of the best teams in the world. 
And once again, they've got a lot of tactics they're using around the game, especially on the breakdowns. And they get away with it, you know, and exactly what happened last week. You know, uh, we knew that that was their plan. Uh, we were just disappointed with the way we started the game. I don't think we started with the, with the right intensity, you know, the way we started. And uh, they were physical, they fit on. Uh, and that, that first half was actually probably so far one of our worst first half so far because we've only played three games, you know. And when we played in the Pretoria, I think we've set the tone nicely. We were the most physical team when we started the game. And we saw at the end, you know, it worked for us. So we have to congratulate them for the win. You know, even though we were disappointed and very sad, the thing is about them, they don't go away. You know, they keep on fighting, they keep on trying. And like I said again, yes, they get away with a lot of things, but it's not in our hands, you know. We must make sure that also whenever we get a chance, we have to pitch up. So and you worked on that um, yeah. rock from the line out of the job. Yeah, for sure. We, we knew that it was coming and we've prepared for it during the week. But once again, they executed that plan better than us. And uh, if you, we had a good chat also with our players during half time and a lot of things with managed to fix at least in that second half. But once again, like I said to you, they've stayed in the game and the opportunity when it came for them, you know, they've capitalized with those strong goals. Uh, which is, we have to say, well done to them also. Uh, Coach, how important has it been not to overreact from last week and stick to the plan and have a full confidence that it is going to go? I must say it was tough because a lot of us were deeply hurt with that, uh, with that loss because I know as a team we've really, really worked very hard and the players were also disappointed, you know, and it shows uh, the amount of, uh, how can I put it? Because a lot of us, we really, really worked hard and we really wanted to win the series and, uh, and, and give it to our people back at home because of, for after the World Cup, you know, that's in the past, we couldn't play in front of our home crowd. And uh, to see uh, the supporters, most especially starting from Pretoria, and then even Devon was another level also when it comes to the vibe and the people that we were supporting. And we felt, we felt after the game, the, the quietness where people that were really also uh, had with that law. So it would have been nice to, to finish the series very well and then and win the series. But once again, it's part of the game. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't lose. And one thing that I know for sure, in a lot of tough loss that we had in the past, we've always uh, bounced back nicely and strong as a team. So hopefully that, that will set the tone also for us throughout the season. Okay. No, no, I'll... Yeah, no, yeah. And then Lemisu and then Percy. Someone, um, uh, you obviously filling the boots of, of CEO who's, who's become a worldwide such a great leader. Um, did he have any message for you? And just how do you feel about stepping into those boots as well? Yeah, he's obviously that's that's big shoes to fill. Um, and CEO, uh, like you so rightfully mentioned, that he's become uh, an inspirational leader all over the world. Um, and I think, you know, his contribution this, this week has really been invaluable. Um, first thing he told me was congratulations. And he said, don't, don't ever take it lightly. Um, enjoy the occasion and, and, and really, really cherish it. Uh, so that's really what I'm going to do this weekend. And yeah, he's helped me with the, like managing the players and really advised me not to worry about anything. Just focus on my game, first of all. Which I fully agree with him, um, but to have him, you know, in your back pocket is really second to none. And someone that I can call whenever I need, um, so I'll definitely be doing that tonight. <laughs> um, I think you will know and know and understand representation, especially in the right cycles. When you look at someone being given an opportunity to become a Springbok captain, how much does it resonate, especially within with some months? Uh, the area that comes from that has a very big um, all that supporter base, but slowly but surely over the past six to eight years, it's been a slight, a, a gradual transition into supporting mm -hmm. the Springboks. I think that's what we that's what we stand for as a team, as the Springboks. We we always want to represent everyone in South Africa. You know, we're not just representing us because of we are black and we represent everyone in South Africa. And uh, one thing about again the opportunity that some man has got. I think it's a well-deserved opportunity. He has really worked very hard. And uh, and once again, I'm very proud for his, his family. I know his, uh, his parents very well. I've 
met them a couple of times and I know how much they invest in, uh, in, in, in supporting Salman. You know? So for him now to get an opportunity, I think it's a great thing. And once again, like you've mentioned, a lot of our friends, you know, in the past, they were like these big All Blacks supporters. And I've got a couple of friends that at least um, I keep on, well, every probably after every game, I keep on welcoming them back as to say, <laughs> welcome home, which is, that's exactly what we need as a country, you know. And uh, there are reasons for to support the other side. I, I respect them. It's, it's, their, it's their reasons. But once again, I think the direction where we are going as a country, I think it's, 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 it's something that is very, very special. We see a lot of South Africans being united behind our, our Springbok team. And uh, once again, I'm going to say this, uh, Kaniso, is that we don't take the positions that we, where we sit in now for granted, you know, because we know it's not about us. One of the days where, okay, it's, all, it's about Mzwani Lestit now, getting an opportunity. I have to make sure in the position where I am now, uh, I make it also possible for the future coaches. I'm talking about black and white and colored. Those who are young coaches out there who's got a dream to be sitting in the same place as me, I need to make sure that I leave this place in the better place for whoever is going to step up next time. So it's a privilege, it's an honor. And every time when we sit here and every game you get selected, it's something that is special that we, can, we don't take it for granted. Um, can I possibly just get the views of both of you, colleagues, please? Um, someone, can I just ask you, um, a lot's been said about this historic match, Portugal playing the first time here. Someone more up making history, but then there's only a one strong woman's gonna be in the middle tomorrow. What is your approach to this referee making her not a debut but an historic match versus the world champions? First, can I ask you, how have you guys spoken to the leadership in the squad on the approach towards this referee? Because a lot of eyes on the spin box, how they treat match officials. Um, I think for us as a team, um, obviously, it changes a, a to be honest, it doesn't really change our approach. We always treat our refs with, with respect, with the utmost respect. Um, and um, Ali, she's obviously a, a well-deserved referee to, to get this position. She's uh, showed um, over the years in the URC in particular that she's a very capable ref. Um, I, haven't, I haven't worked with her yet, but um, obviously from the games that I've watched, she's been really exceptional. And... Um, Congrats to her as well for her first test match. Um, it's well deserved, like I said. Uh, but for us as a team, it's really we've got a certain standard um, around our game, and we also want to treat uh, the refs with utmost respect. And it doesn't really change from ref to ref. I think Salman summarized it by just one word: with respect. You know, that's one thing that uh, we as a Springbok. Uh, uh, we've done our research and we know that Oli is a, she's a, she's a respected match official in URC and I've watched a couple of games where she's always in the middle, you know, and uh, I, I like her confidence and how she communicates with the players, you know. So uh, tomorrow, uh, actually, I must also congratulate her, you know, uh, uh, first time referring uh, the Springboks, you know, and uh, well-deserved appointment, you know. And uh, once again, if you look at the personnel that's sitting next to me, I think, He's one of the probably the best guys to be able to work with her on the field, you know. Otherwise, the rest of the players we won't say much on the ref. You know, that's not a, what that's not how we operate. You know, the captain will work with the refs. The ref to the players, they will just make sure that we play our game. And uh, congrats again to her, and uh, hopefully everything will go well tomorrow. And it's actually, sorry, let me finish by saying this: well done to World Rugby for empowering women. Well done for bringing the change, and that it is what we talk about when we talk about transformation. People always think about transformation as black and white. You know, for World Rugby to make a decision to give an opportunity to ref to, uh, top tier nations, that's exactly what we need in our game. You know, we're gonna, one thing for sure I know, we're gonna have more female refs, more especially after uh, that, that tomorrow, you know, getting an opportunity to ref a spring box. I know there will be ladies in South Africa that would have also to be match officials. We know Amy's been doing the job, but we need more of them uh, being involved in our game. So congrats to her. Again. As one well, with the captain's run, did you have a scrum? And how did you, how was it? The cheetahs complained for the first match that they said it was slippery. Um, we actually thought that the surface was really nice. Um, Coach Dan spoke to us and he, he agrees, he thinks. Not sure if it's because he's from the Free State, but he, he feels that uh, it's probably one of the best services in the country. Um, so we'll we'll mark him clean. This is out it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I think the surface is good. Coach. Yeah. Guys, I'm actually running out of time, so last English question here. Yeah.
diagnostics. I'm working with Debbie Jensen <coughs> and the team. When was the time where you said, like, my job is done? It can, well, be, it, <laughs> it can never be done. But once again, whenever I see a youngster getting an opportunity, it, it, it brings a smile into my heart. You know, because I know I'm, a lot of them, like I said, I've, had, I've worked with them since a young age. And I'm very, very passionate about young guys, you know, getting an opportunity, you know. And if we talk about uh, our South African rugby to be in the healthy state where we are correct, I think we need more of them coming through. So once again, remember the guys that have won the World Cup for us from 2019 and 2023. They're not getting young. So we have to make sure that we've got a solid plan in place and to give them opportunities now and then. I think that's exactly what we need as a team. And uh, once again, I'm excited to see a couple of them getting an opportunity tomorrow. And uh, congratulations to all of them. Any issue? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> <coughs>